Welcome back to Pod Crush. Um, we've got our first non-cyclist on the podcast, um, Andrew Cotton, who is a big wave surfer. And uh, for some reason, he's actually up in Wimslow. Um, yeah. Strike a lot. Talk <laughs> while you're here. <laughs> while I'm here. Um, well, I spent a lot of time in the last two years. Unfortunately, I do my. Um, I've had a couple of major injuries in the last two years. Um, and I do a lot of my rehab uh, through uh, Harrison Ross. Um, yeah. Red Bull use them as their sort of um, go to guys, really. So I, I've been, been up here a lot. Oh, we used to use them back in the day when, like, um, it was before 2012 Olympics. They stopped giving the, the kids lower down any kind of physio or massage and stuff like that. So right. we, we used to go to Alison Ross a little bit, but it was yeah. quite good. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, no. What do you mean? Yeah, you weren't you weren't well, involved at all. You, <laughs> I've, I've, you, yeah, too fair. I had a good treatment back you, in the you, days. You got the best of the best yeah, the whole time. Yeah. You've never had to. Yeah. But you know what? Open your own pocket. Because I medal at the Junior World Championships. Uh, oh, is that what it was? was Apparently it? so. It's what I've been told. So. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so I think a good place to start, because obviously I think our, our like, um, base is mainly um, kind of cycling fans, I guess. It's yeah. just to explain what like Big Wave is and how that compares to surfing being in the Olympics now and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you could give us a little intro, a little intro on that. Intro. Um, nice. Well, Big Waves, I don't know. It's, it's kind of... It's not. It's not a competitive surfing, in you know, as you'd know it, as in like the WSL or what the sort of surfing is going to be like in the Olympics. It's just. Um, it's kind of like. I just go out and find the biggest waves humanly possible. <laughs> I don't know. And it's just got. It's quite sort of snowballed right from, like I grew up in in Devon and I like pushing myself at home. Um, to then traveling a little bit, to them becoming sort of obsessed with it and the waves just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah, um, so what's the maximum height we're talking here in terms uh, of wave? Well, there's, there is no maximum height and that's the thing I, I, I love about it. You know, it's it's continuous. Um, as in like, you know, you, we're talking about mother nature and the storms, the storms, you know, storms can produce waves of, of over 100 feet and it's just you know if not bigger sometimes smaller and it's just, you're just chasing storms so you become like a, almost like a bit of a, a weather geek um so it's a bit like the storm chases in the u.s or something yeah like kind of a <laughs> bit weird like, yeah it yeah. is yeah you kind of yeah and when the storms happen and obviously you're not looking for storms to hit like mainland you're looking for storms in the atlantic mm. um so you sort of track those and then you sort of work out where to go in so if you're looking at the Atlantic it'd be where do, where do I go in Europe or if I'm looking you know in the Pacific it'd be like where do I go you know like in the North Pacific or wherever you know like states wherever so no for sure so like how, how did you so I guess like one of the questions we always get asked that being in part of because I, I guess it's fair enough to call big wave surfing like a bit of a niche sport almost yeah for sure yeah. so like we're, we're in a niche sport as well so how, how do you how do you find yourself doing something like big wave surfing for a living um well, I never intended it to be a job. Um, and I think that's the the thing. Uh, like, you just follow what you love, you know. And I, and I think if you go down that route is to think, I'm going to earn some money or I'm going to do this as a job, then you'll be massively disappointed. Um, I mean, that's what we say to everyone as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> you should like, take up football instead of cycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, um, you know, for, for me, I like, it, like I've always loved surfing. Um, you know, I left school and, you know, dreamed of being a professional surfer and got told pretty much like it's not possible. You can't do that, you know, and and that's fair enough, you know, at that point, you know, like um, surfing wasn't really sort of classed as even a sport, maybe. I don't know, a hobby, I don't know. Like, um, so I just worked in the surf industry for a bit um, because it was great and it, it got me um involved in what i love which was surfboards so I, I made surfboards for a amount of years and then i um rep surf brands and sold wetsuits and clothing and stuff and and then i had um and how, that, how old were you at this time so i left school at 16 um i went straight into full-time work oh really um and that 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 was just like it was like being a professional surfer you know like i, I worked but i worked flexible hours i worked in a factory really terrible dirty work but it was work making surfboards, mm. so enabled me to have, you know, good surfboards. We we worked our days around the tides, so we were able to surf pretty much whenever we wanted. 
and the industry was so it's obviously so small and so niche yeah, yeah. Um, that it was like a nine month season you know so I worked for nine months and had three months off I guess that's pretty unique for like a factory to yeah. base its working hours around the surf time basically though. yeah but w- when you say when I say a factory like it's like cottage industry it was like three of us in, in the shed <laughs> pretty yeah. much you know like um, yeah we, we manufactured surfboards and they were actually you know they were really good and the, the company is still going it's called Gulfstream it's based in Woolacombe in Devon and um, you know it, it's it, everyone it's a labour of love you know like and that's what surfing is a passion, you know, and um, and the guys that I worked with were all avid surfers and they were there for the love. No, no one was there for the money, you know. Mm. We were there for the, because we, we wanted to, to, to base our lives around surfing. And um, and I did that until I was about 25. Okay, but I hear you've had a, a few other jobs on the go besides yeah. that. Yeah, so, so, so I did that until I was 25 and then I um, had like a, you know, one of those moments where you you know you sort of that panic moment you know like yeah like, shit can you know this isn't gonna i mean phil's going through that like that's now, what so i have right now yeah <laughs> what am i going to do after cycling yeah what am i going to do you know and it, you, you know you always get these every every 10 years or so don't you you know and you know what can i do what am i going to do and and money is always the big factor and um so i retrain as a plumber and it was at the time when there was a massive shortage of uh, skilled workers and plumbers and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah. and um my dad sort of was quite pro sort of get get um at a you know, like a, a skill or something that you can actually Like a fallback or something, yeah. Yeah, not a fallback. It was just like, you know, he was just like you're never gonna be able to if you want a family or you want to buy a house or, you know, you want you know, you can't his thing was that you can't surf forever. Hmm. You know? Um or do what you know, you can't be because at the end of the day, like, I was working full time, but I wasn't really, you know, I was just going around the world having a great yeah. time. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I didn't have any money and, um, and I didn't own a house. Or I, didn't have, I actually didn't own anything, to be honest. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, backpack. Uh, yeah, backpack and a load of great <laughs> surfboards. Um, but yeah, his thing was that you can't, you know, you can't do that forever. So I sort of, I, I reluctantly sort of quit um, the, the surf industry bit or the surfboard fan manufacturing and retrain as a plumber. And, um, and I did that. I did the apprenticeship and um, and whatnot, and you know, got a job straight away. As soon as I did a three-year apprenticeship, and, and got a job pretty much straight away. Yeah, but I know from your vlogs, you've got a few other professions like washing dishes, uh. saving lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 all yeah they all came like so like I I've, I putting putting pots in the bin as yeah. well. I think it was another one. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was like really way back. That was when I was, when I was like at school still washing the dishes. But um, yeah, like I, I got a full time job uh, plumbing, and then instantly hated it and decided, like I didn't care how much money I was earning or yeah, you know like, yeah. I just wasn't gonna do it until I was retired. So I quit, and then retrained as a lifeguard. And how long ago, like how long um, have you been a plumber for? Well, you, re- n- you never stop once you start filming. Yeah, no, like yeah, once you get a trade like that, you stick a cold out. Yeah, it's no. just like, oh, can you just come and look at this? You're like, not a chance. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, so I did that. I kind of like did it. I, I did it like as a full time job, like employed by an employer. I did we there was a, like um, it was we installed solar panels and we underfloor heating, and I did that yeah. for a year as a proper job, um, and then quit, and then. Then I sort of tried to th- get back into my surfing, and I was, um, I had more of a goal then. I had, I was like, okay, right, I like big waves. I'm going to focus on big waves and I'm going to try and work around that. So I was just self employed plumbing, trying to chase a bit, a bit like big wave surfing yeah. and the, the, the waves. Um, yeah, and then I, I sort of took that path, and then, then I decided, like, the pl- I just hated the plumbing so much. I was like, right, and I sat the plumbing o- off completely, and I retrained as a lifeguard, and because it was just it all fitted in like the lifeguard. It wasn't like a pool lifeguard; it was for the R and I beach lifeguarding. So you you kind of th- those guys have surfboards. Like maybe that's the long term, but they they do go out and surfboards to save people. Don't yeah, they, yeah, you bit? go on like big paddle boards, and um, it just meant that I was on the beach every day training. I was in my environment that I wanted to be in. They 
the R and I did an exceptional training in life saving skills, but also like on jet skis and all the stuff that mm. I want us to use to surf. How how is it being a lifeguard? Is it is it as fun as it looks in Baywatch, or is it? Um, no, <laughs> it's surprising that it can be like I worked at Croyd. Croyd's like an exceptionally busy beach. Um, it can be quite dangerous. Um, you know, you have great moments where like the beach is empty and you live in the dream, and you have days where you're rescuing like tens 20 30 40 people you know oh. like people you know just it can be hardcore like it's yeah. quite stressful yeah but the the the, po- the positives were you know way out number like you know it, 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 it was just i was on the beach training every day with like-minded people that just wanted to be super fit super water confident you know and, and all those skills i could use them and what I wanted to do, which was surf big waves. So well, yeah, we've got a funny story about our friend. Um, we were in Rio de Janeiro on the beach at Copacabana, and the waves were quite harsh out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good waves there. Yeah, there's a lot and, of good. And he was Brazilian surfers. He, ca- he can't swim well, can he? And no, he's not built for and, swimming. And he's got he really small like, feet. And he <laughs> thought he was like the. W- he called himself the wave master. He's a fan and of Amiga watches. Yeah, and he used so to like it. swim into the waves and get drowned and dragged under the floor. And he just like no. He didn't. The, the, the best thing I saw yeah. was like he had he got sunstroke on the first day because he also decided he didn't need any sun protection at all. Um, so he had he had blistered shoulders, and then he got dragged under the waves a couple of times, and then got dragged along the sand and the beach, and then that made the blisters even worse. Oh, like they're yeah. all completely fucked. And but, then but then he also ended up having like arguments with the lifeguards because it was lead flags everywhere, and he was like, "No, you don't understand." I'm the wave master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the lifeguards were whistling out, so yeah, you probably get, get quite frustrated with this, don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's yeah, it's, it's classic. Yeah, like I, I really enjoyed the lifeguard, and like it was, um, it was a, a good period of um, like a lot of training and, mm. and and sort of moving towards my sort of goal, you know, which was like surfing. I suppose it was maybe was surfing full time. Like I never really thought it ha- happened, but. Um, you know, put a lot of energy into getting good waves. You know? I guess, I guess, a bit what I'm interested in is like, uh, so like the reason why, pa- you know, my passion for cycling and the thing that made me stick to it was that um, kind of adrenaline rush and that speed kick. Mm. So like, we'll, we'll go down the bankings and like when you're a kid, you're probably going like 60 k's an hour or something. It's not yeah. especially fast, but you get a, a kind of proper G4 sensation when you go down the corner. And I was, you know, when you don't have a driving license. Um, you know, you don't. Edinburgh doesn't have any roller coasters or anything like yeah. that. It's a, it's a great way to get that speed fix. Yeah. So for you, like, what kicked off that that passion for surfing? Um, I don't know. I kind of like, like the ocean has just that, like, I don't know, some sort of power or energy that I'm drawn to, and like I was never sort of happy. Like I obviously I was happy, but like I always wanted to push that as far as I could, and like. The, the the further I pushed it, the more exciting it got. Mm. So like I I found like 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 the, usually the typical route of professional surfing is you you know as a kid I entered the competitions and then you'd go to like British champs, European champs, and then you'd get on the the world tour or something like that, and then you know you do the contests, you know, which are usually in like small ways, which is probably something you'll see in the Olympics. Um, was like I was just that's the first disc for the Olympics here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, no, no. It's like, and that's great. That's professional surfing. Yeah, mm. that's what surfing is known as. You know, like, yeah. and but I was just so shit at surfing small waves. You know, mm. like it just it wasn't my strength. You know, at all. Mm. No matter how much I wanted it to be, and it was like traveling and and you know I had mates that were exceptional surfers, far better surfers than me. Far like they're the people that I aspired to be. But when shit got real in the sea and, and the waves got bigger, they didn't want a bar of it, you know, like, mm. and then I came into my own little sort of, my little zone where I was like, I was confident, I was getting the better waves. And then, then you sort of like think, well, actually, yeah, well, well, you just do the things you like and you love, you know, and, I'm, and you're good at, and you just keep chasing that. And so what, was it like an adrenaline thing though? Because I, I always see this thing like, so from, you know, watching surfing and stuff in the past, there's like, you know, you, you get into that kind of curl of the wave and stuff like that. And it just seems like that kind of like euphoric kind of space, I guess. Yeah, but it's not adrenaline. Or you're getting chased down by the kind of whites of the waves as well. Yeah, and then like, it's... It, like, it's not adrenaline as in, and y- you guys might know this as well, like when shit's going really, really fast, it almost slows down. Mm. And that's, you know... Like so, it's not chaotic, and it's not like adrenaline, like, like you think, 
um, you know, picture of him like an American beating his chest, you know, like, oh, I'm the toughest, you know, like, it's like um, time slow, slowing down and like you're getting, you know, you just feel the energy and it just puts you in a good place, you know, like. I guess colloquially it'd be referred to as like being in the zone or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I guess it's because, flow. yeah. I think, you know, like flow, flow yeah. state, you know, like. Because you had so many years of experience of it, you know what to do and. Yeah, and it's, and, and you know, you get, you get scared, you know, and, and, but you have to, you know, it's, it's, I think, you know, as the, like a, re you know, like we're classical, you know, it's like, if you get scared, don't do it, you know, or like, you know, mm. pull back. And I was never when like, like you embrace that fear and you, you know, and you push it as far as you can, you know, and, and I, f for me personally, like, um, I've never had, I've been scared thousands and thousands of times in the ocean and, uh, or not scared, but I've feared maybe or I, feel, you know, I have fear but i've never had a bad experience mm. like i've never had an experience mm. where i've gone right shit that's it like that's it i don't want, you know i don't want any more you know or that's 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 i've got to the point now where yeah you know I, I, i'm tapping out you know <laughs> like, I, I don't want to go any bigger you know like i've always just always like done it been scared or been seen that fear challenged it got away with it you know, not always unscathed, but I've got away with it and like thinking, yeah, okay, right, I want some more. You know? I think for a lot of people, that's the opposite when it comes to the ocean. Because I remember when I was I was quite young, I caught out in a riptide with, um, with my brother. Yeah. And um, I did like lookies, which is like lifeguard training and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, don't worry brother <laughs> i've got this sussed yeah. i'll get you back to the back to the shore and we, we were we were fucked like we, we generally just got like ripped out and we were fighting against the yeah. riptide because yeah. it, it tries to pull you out and you're better just to go with it and come back in but we were fighting it the whole time and and for me that was the first time that you really get a sense for like the power of the ocean i guess yeah like the ocean. but for you that was the opposite it was like that was kind of like i want more of that instead of i want less yeah, i guess like like I've a hundred percent respect for the ocean, and it can be so scary, like when it's flat, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and I've seen what it can do and to people, and I've seen, you know, you know, you've had stories and witnessed it, and yeah, it deserves the utmost respect. But it also, you know, you're not you're not trying to beat it. You're just trying to like we're going back to flow and energy. You know, you're just flowing with it, you know, and you, you're enjoying it, and like. You know, wh when you get that right, it's it's like probably the best th best feeling in the world. You know, like and that and that's like a fix that you need to keep getting, basically. Um, yeah, I suppose it is. You know, like um, you know, it's just that thing that keeps you going. You know, like it it make it puts like you know, like this last six months of rehab and and Harrison Ross and you know like doing gym work, which I don't particularly want to do or like. You know, but it makes it like, okay, right, it's, it's worth doing this because I want to, <laughs> you know. That's so many athletes' yeah. perception of the gym. It's like, I don't really like this, but yeah, I have yeah. to do it to be better, basically. Yeah, yeah. Or, 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 you know, to be able to, you need to know that you're going to be fit enough to withstand what you want to do, you know. And, and that's, and that is my motivation, you know, is 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 the riding surfing waves, you know, that's what I love, you know. So the, there's there's a bit of um, competitive big wave stuff though as well. So so how does that work? Um, yeah, there is. Yeah, so there's uh, like the big wave world tour, mm. uh, which is only like three stops. Um, uh, or, or, Pretty or nice stops, I hope though. Places. Well, no, well, yeah, no, they are the Mavericks. Like I might I might have got this wrong. So uh, Mavericks in California, Nazare in Portugal, and uh, Jaws on Maui. The, mm. um so there are three spots at the minute um sometimes they have other, other uh porto escondido and mexico is on it for a bit because we're usually stuck in like eastern europe or yeah the arse end of nowhere basically they always yeah, put because they're very expensive they put them in yeah. Yeah. places that need a bit of uplift but but the thing is with like guy like you probably have a date which you can train to mm. the mm -hmm. big wave because we're relying on the weather patterns and yeah. and storms and stuff we have like usually like forty eight hours notice to get there, so you don't really? never know. So you never know when it's when it's going to be on. So that's that's how it works. Like they're just basically like yeah, it's, it's happening now, and you need to be here. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So and, that, and and that's how basically my life revolves around weather systems, and like it's so hard to plan. It must it, cost a fortune as well to it, book a last minute flight. Yeah, it's expensive. It it drives family, friends, like 
nuts because you know we go okay yeah we, we can do this next week and then and then you know you look at the weather you're like oh shit I can't be here I've got to be like in Portugal it's going to be 60 foot and perfect like there's no way like <laughs> yeah. there's no way I'm not going to miss that so so it can drive family and friends nuts and it, and it makes your training quite hard and because you've got to always be sort of on it hmm. you know and and, the, and it's hard like when you're when you're training to an event that's that nice you can you know you can see where it's going yeah um so it does it does you know so so the big wave tour they have like windows three month windows and um and they'll call it yeah two days before and go okay right fence on but it almost sounds to me a little bit like you know with your your comment earlier about the small waves and the, you know you go through the juniors europeans and junior yeah. worlds and all that kind of stuff that maybe one of the attractions about big wave is that it's it's not so structured yeah for sure yeah and and it, and it's it's um you know i think surfing is very subjective in a way you know it's not it, you know it's opinionated um you, you know and and like even to the point of like that cuz w- with the big wave tour it becomes like you have like the big wave awards at the end of the year and you get like ride of the year and biggest wave of the year and things like that wipe out of the year wipe out of the year Ooh. Nope. <laughs> yeah wipe out of the year um you past, know past winner for anyone pa- who yeah, doesn't yeah, know yeah, yeah. past winner yeah <laughs> Um, unfortunately um, you know and that's all subjective as well because you know how do you measure a wave and do, does that kind of like frustrate you a little bit that, that organised sport is almost trying to kind of get into this this area of what, what is really a subjective sport because are you talking about the Olympics now no well <laughs> Olympics or like just, just generally in surfing because it sounds like it's more like a passion and a love and it's uh, about chasing the big waves but organi- uh, organised sport brings in certain limitations I guess yeah um, but then it opens lots of doors mm. you know and you know, if you want to do it professionally and there's so many people that want to do it professionally and it, and it needs, you know, I think it needs the competition as much as you sort of, some people might hate it. And I don't, I don't hate it. I, you know, I, I competed when I was a kid and, and I've competed on the big wave world tour, you know, and, um, you know, I think it opens lots of doors and it, you know, so I think you need that hmm. as much as like some, some part of me is thinking, you know, yeah, kind of like, someone's judging me on something that they think they don't like but someone else might like it you know like, I, I kind of feel like that that fits into a lot of extreme sports because yeah. I, I guess it's quite a modern thing you know with the mm. x games and the olympic sport the olympic games taking up a lot of extreme sports it's yeah. a little bit like you know i like uh, so i know amy fuller quite well from uh, she's a snowboarder yes, and all that yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah and i always feel like um she's just wired a little bit differently from a lot of the olympic athletes because olympic athletes are so almost um subservient to the structure of the sport I yeah guess. yeah so is about meeting these certain targets whereas the extreme athletes are all a bit like oh we're all in this together who cares yeah. like that was awesome that was you know whatever <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? but then when it when it comes down to the gold medal and only and only like you know you were saying like you know when only one ever really cares about for you know first second or third or, or first yeah. <laughs> you know and you're like okay well hang on like you know, it would be so interesting to see um, how it all plays out with surfing in the Olympics, you know. Um, and I think it's really positive and it's going to give loads of young kids something to aim for. But, you know, um, it, you know, will that be their only aim, you know? Like, whereas me, it was just like... The, it, well, it's like a lifestyle, I guess, yeah, as opposed but to it, being it, a sport. It opened up loads of different, you know, it was a reason to travel and... I don't know, so much more. Um, but, you know, my, my sort of style of Olympics, uh, my, my, my sort of style of surfing will, n- will never be in the Olympics anyway, so, you know. Well, not yet. Yeah, I just don't think you, it's just not. Unless you know, Portugal or yeah, yeah. California hosts it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Los Angeles is coming up. That's not far away. Well, if it depends yeah. on the weather, it's pretty hard yeah. to time it in a certain exactly. month. Exactly. Mate, you've got a month to fit in some big waves. It'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah we'll see. So yeah, is it, so it's a bit of a love hate thing that whole competitive atmosphere a little bit because it seems more about the people and the travel and the experience and all that kind of stuff. I guess a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think. But it, but it's good for the sport ultimately. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Well, it's you know, um, you know, competitions and it's like a showcase and you know, which attracts sponsors and hopefully gets surfing on TV, makes it more bigger, mainstream, and then you know, uh, yeah, more people see it, more people want to do it, then brings more, more money into it i suppose you know so so what's the what's the kind of professional landscape like like does it support a good number of athletes or is it is it a little bit of a mixture of amateur and professional or like how you know what what does the top 10 look like are those guys all professional basically um like the global top 10 guys like 
in big wave surfing, uh, you know, they'll all, they'll all be professional. You know, mm. Mm. Um, you know it, it's kind of weird. Like I I always, even though like I was never, you know, I I really I went professional as in you know if you want to call it professional, as in I wasn't really having to do plumbing or lifeguarding when I was 35 which is really really late yeah mm-hmm. um but you know probably six years prior to that I was sort of treating myself even though I was working day jobs and all the research I was like treating myself as a you know thinking of it as a job you know surfing like oh no I need to be on this next big swell because you know just, just something in me I just had to do it you know like mm. <laughs> had to go bigger had to you know push it as far as I could <laughs> you know um you know, it, but it's it's hard. You rely on sponsorship. You know, every, every sponsorship deal, and and you're you're not in a team. You know, you're not a lot of the time. You're like a s- singular person. You know, um, so you, so it is hard. You are like you know injuries come up, and you're sort of trying to piece it together yourself. You haven't got a coach or you know your own personal physio or your your team manager, and you're just trying to work it out yourself. You know, like. Um, which can be hard. You know? Almost quite isolating to a point? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and I think it's a really hard, it is a hard sport to to break, you know, like, or break into full profession, professional, you know, like, or term fully professional. I don't, you know, um, I, d- I feel I got, re- you know, really lucky, right time, right place. I've met the right people and... Um, so, th- so that bit is almost quite subjective as well. As, so I guess for us, like, you know, for timed athletes, it's basically yeah. just do a good time and you're on the scene. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. And then, yeah, you know, but it's not, you know, like we're saying, it's subjective. And I think you just have to put a lot of hard work in, you know, and, and y- you know, you have to take a, well, I suppose like any sport though, isn't it? You know, you take a lot of rejection, a lot of like, like constantly let down by yourself. You never feel like you never do enough. You like, you know, it, you're constantly battling, you know, um, and some people break, don't they? You know, like, but yeah. fuck, is it worth it? You know, like, yeah, yeah. Can't be bothered. I'm gonna get a normal job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and some people were just like so stubborn and well, just, just keep going, yeah. keep going, keep going. Rejection, failure, rejection, failure. Keep going, keep going. Which is like in in the nicest way possible. Doesn't really happen as a plumber unless you're really shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think that's the thing though. Is like um, you know wh- wh- when you're an athlete and you're you're pushing it to the edge, like it, it takes a certain kind of person to take that constant rejection. And I don't know about you, but I always felt when I was competing, like you're the you're the harshest critic of yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah. If you th- if you think when all the races we do, we always we always do shit really, apart from the Olympics or maybe one World Cup. And pretty much ninety percent of all the other races, you come eighth, tenth. You don't really do that yeah, well. You learn something from that, but, I guess. Yeah, but, but yeah, but then it's about timing, isn't it? You know, yeah. like it's about pushing the button. And and I've I found that that big wave surfing is that like, um, it's about those you know that that risk benefit and putting it all on the line. You know, like at the right time because you can't do it all the time. Mm. And like, you know, previously like probably in my late 20s early 30s you know i pushed the button far too many times <laughs> you know and well because you it's like any athlete you just want to go and go and go go go, go. Yeah, and yeah. then you're like inj- injured or fatigued or like you never like and you know you, the other the end of the day like you know i could go out and surf the biggest wave in the world tomorrow and then but next week there might be a bigger wave you know and, and like so do you save yourself you know you mean or do you, you know or do you risk it put it all on this one you know it's it's, it's it could a, even just be like 20 seconds later there's a bigger wave yeah you know and and yeah. it is and and you you have to manage that constantly and you're reading the forecast you're how you're feeling you know like sometimes it's the the sort of how far you are gone in the season you know like is you know the 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 season six month season in europe um uh, october through to march and um you know you don't want to be be going too hard at the beginning because you know technically the, the biggest swells are towards the end mm. but you also you don't want to be blowing every, you know opportunities you know so it is it's a, it's knowing having that feeling right yeah so i guess my next question is going to be a little bit about so, so you were saying when you started out it was all about 
the love of the sport, no one was in it for the money, but obviously now that avenue is open to be a professional surfer. Is, is that something that you kind of look at the younger guys coming up and you kind of question their motives a little bit because you think, because in cycling we'd call them a bit more of like a lifestyle, I guess. So they're more into the lifestyle of being a professional cyclist as to the reality of it, I guess. Is that is that something that's kind of crept into the sport a little bit? That they're in it for success instead of in it for the love of it? Like it's a hard thing to explain, you know, especially big wave surfing. Like I've had mates that um, are, are sort of successful competitive surfers and they would say, "Oh yeah, I want to, you know, I want to start big wave surfing because they maybe th- see it as an avenue to, to, you know, for more coverage, or whatever." Yeah. But you give them, give them half a winter, and they're like, "Fuck this." Well, that's kind of the same thing with <laughs> us. Like the lifestyle has never last. No. But it. But no, sometimes, they come and go, like, but sometimes it's a bit frustrating when you see like a young kid or something like that is is driven by the success success factor opposed to but, just but, the love of the sport. I guess. Yeah, you know, but you'll get that and, and everything, you know, and. and it's like nothing nothing good happens quickly you know and, and it's 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 dedication and time and you know and, and you'll get that and you, like you know and people come and go and, and then people hang around you know like and, and it's the guys that put the time and effort and that get the rewards so you know? it's kind of the love of the sport carries you through i guess yeah because there's nothing you know like you like you guys probably know more than anyone like the amount of effort and the hardships you have to, to put in you know like you know you f- f- for me it's like the last minute flights the getting up at 5 a.m to put a cold wet suit on you know like the being shit scared the you know all the things you know that that, that come with it you know yeah, <laughs> no you, one sees you, that you know? take with the smooth I yeah, guess. yeah yeah like and, uh, people you know what you see is you might see like a nice edited video with someone riding down a big wave. They're know? pretty well edited, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking, oh, yeah. that, that seems like life for me. But yeah, yeah you don't you don't pick up you, on the whole bits about no, the 6am. Like, no, kind of you know, like, um, and especially, you, you know, I've been fortunate now um, to have some amazing sponsors, you know, who support me and back me and, and make my life a lot easier. But the road up to that, you know, like where reality was like, driving around Europe in my van, sleeping in it, you know, like... F- like I, Which I, is quite yeah. fashionable these days. Yeah. <laughs> no, not not on the van that I was oh, driving at the time, mate. I'll tell you that much. You so, know, like, well, what was the turning point for you to get to sponsorship? What, that was like a certain way for you wrote, or...? Um, I think there was a turning point. So I was working for um, uh, an American company um, who were also sponsoring me. So I was um, working for them, uh, repping their clothes. It was actually owned by Burton Snowboards, but the, the brand was called Analog, and they were okay. sort of um, sort of testing the water with surf at the time. Um, so I was working for them, but they were also sort of helping me fund my winter sort of travels and, and big wave exports in, the, in, you know, as well. So it was a really good relationship we had. And um, I was with them for like, for, quite a few years and I was like for me at that point like I was like well, I was living the dream you know like I was working getting work experience and, and working but also support of like a massive brand helping me push my surfing and um and just over like one morning just woke up had an email just it was like ter- contracts terminated it's done yeah and um and at this point I you know had, had a obviously a wife and small small child and and i was just like like i don't know like sort of everything just shattered you know like and i was like shit like that's it you know i think i was like 32 or something was it was this and um i remember seeing a video of you in 2012 yeah and, and you were kind of really struggling with the sponsors and stuff like that and a few people had left the sport off the back of the the market just being a bit yeah a bit of slump i guess well yeah like the surf brand sort of just couldn't they were i think stru- surfing and and like a lot of those big five brands, you know, and, and the surf industry was just struggling, you know, and um, a lot of people were pulling plugs and, and obviously sponsorship and marketing is the first thing t- to go. And, and you know, guys like myself, were the, you know, that's what we rely on, you know, is, 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 is those marketing budgets to, to help fund us. I remember, waves, you know? I remember in that video, it was quite um, harrowing in a way that your your wife kind of, 
backed you through it as well because it was it, i guess it was a bit of a, a toss-up at that point it's a bit becomes a bit more of a gamble yeah and then that's the one thing that i like you know especially with and then that's comes from me being very you know like like that's a very like i feel looking back i was like must have been so selfish you know like all oh, athletes yeah. are selfish i wouldn't <laughs> stubborn, about you know it. like yeah. you know like looking back at it, i feel like such a bit i feel like a bit of a, an asshole but you know like but no because i think if, if she had said if she had said like maybe there'd been a few arguments but if she had said <laughs> <laughs> she had if she had said because like, she said basically just fucking go for it you know like just yeah. go 100 percent, go for it do what you want to do and do it you know and go for it and but if she had said like you know okay right well get the tools out and go you know get a job plumbing then i probably would have done it you know like yeah but it, i think it was about being smart and about okay right how can i fund this you know like because you know and and, that, and that's what that was a changing point for me like it was about creating content creating videos getting people to watch it and then then you become like more like how, you know and that's how we did it i did it with epic tv they funded a a winter project about me chasing swells and and you know we didn't we didn't make any money but we didn't didn't cost me any money but I guess that's the the turning point though because you've got, you know you know when you're in your early mid 20s late 20s you can jump mm -hmm. in a van and do what you want but I guess at that point you had dependence to think about as well yeah like like it was like now and ever you know and I like I, I definitely put it like a, a put it on the line a couple of times where you know probably now maybe you know I think you know you know, question that, oh, is this worth it? You know, risk versus benefit. I'd be more like probably err on the side of caution. So you're kind of quite, would you say- Gun high, maybe? You're, you're kind of quite close to, to bailing out maybe at that point, I guess. The closest uh, you've been maybe. Or Well, yeah, yeah. Th th yeah, that was a point of like, that was like, you know, when Analog went and um, and I had no sponsors whatsoever, um, it was, yeah, you know, okay right this is the last ditch effort you know and and that that project with epic tv and, and mikey corker filming and you know and i managed to get a couple of waves that winter that sort of well one wave changed my life you know like it sort of it, it put me on the map and it you know opened so many doors and that so let's talk about that one wave was that the was that the big the big crash basically uh no no that wasn't the, no it was a wave uh um that I got in 2014, which, you know, at that time was sort of, um, the headlines were like, plumber surfs, biggest wave ever. Yeah, I've seen them. You yeah. nearly <laughs> broke the world record, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, this this goes back to that subjective sort of thing. Yeah. And, how, do and, like, they, how do they even measure that stuff? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. You know, so it was said as biggest wave, um, and then it then the WS or the ASP or whoever was measuring it at the time said it wasn't the biggest wave. But it was reported that it was, um, and which gave me so much, um, you know, exposure and um, sort of put surfing in in, in headline news. You and know, but not just in the UK, right around the world. Yeah. You know, how like, tall are we talking with the waves? Um, that day was the biggest day I've, I've ever seen. You know, um, they they were saying the the wave was about eighty feet. What well, can um, you compare that to? Um, for <laughs> anyone's list. six six stories or something like uh, that, maybe. Yeah, like 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 I'd never or seen eight if you're in a really shit flat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd never seen waves like that big, you know. Like, and they were moving so fast, and you know, it was it was stormy as well. It was bumpy. It was like the conditions weren't great, um, you know. But at, at that point in time, it was very obvious. Like I was with Garrett McNamara, a Hawaiian guy. Um, and Hugo Val, who's doing safety, and we knew, you know, like, right, someone's going to get the biggest wave ever today. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like it was like, you know, roll the dice. You know, it's one of us. <laughs> like, can you can you spot a big like wave coming up? Yeah, in, yeah like a head or yeah, you you can see, you know, you see the set, but you know, we change around. So we, um, I just like to say, obviously here this point where like when you're surfing waves as big as that they change as in we don't always paddle we yeah. use jet skis and tow ropes to get us in because the waves go so fast it's almost impossible and to, to paddle into some of those waves that are that big yeah. so you know we were in a three we all surf so we all will surf at some point but we all take turns and doing safety or driving the ski and surfing so it's just like a team you know um 
with all the purpose, you know, we all want to surf the biggest wave. We all want to do the safety and we all, we all want to drive the ski, you know? So, so there's still that like camaraderie within the sport, I guess. Though, yeah. Because well, that, essentially you're, you're kind of like, if you're doing safety, that's a pretty important job to look after your, I guess, teammate at that point. Yeah, hundred percent. And, um, you know, the, the thing is, is that you, there's not many people that you would trust to, to do, to do it. You know, you have to be an experienced big wave surfer to, to be able to know how to drive a ski in those sort of waves. That was my next question. Can we just jump on a jet ski and... No. Nah. Oh, like, okay. like, yeah. like, like you can. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, like for me, it's like driving the ski has always been the hardest the hardest thing to do. And that, that was my in, my in and how I sort of... Because um, uh, like, I, I got to meet um, Garrett McNamara, who is one of my, my sort of heroes when I was a kid. He's, um, you know, he's sort of world renowned big wave surfer and he was in Europe looking for a safety ski driver and uh, somehow I got in contact with him or he got in contact with me or he actually got in contact with a friend um, Al Many and then we went down to support him and that relationship sort of changed because he, he was like oh are you pretty good at driving the ski um, come and help me and I knew at that point I'm like well he can't surf all day <laughs> so at some point he's going to get bored of surfing or tired of surfing and he will tow me in some ways yeah. so I sort of saw that so he he so I was in his team I was driving the skier safety and then I after he'd finished surfing I surfed you know and and I got on the world record in 2012 biggest wave ever surfed 78 feet at the time it was and then payback in 2014 he got me that wave you know and, and but he was surfing in the morning and he got a couple of ways, but they weren't that big. And and then just by luck, like I jumped, we swapped, and the next wave was like just like the biggest thing I've ever seen. And I can remember him thinking, he turned around and was like, "Do you want it?" And I like, <laughs> I was like thinking, "Shit!" Like, and I could tell that he was gutted because he, you know, obviously he wanted it, yeah. but also, you know, there's nothing as when you're in that situation. There's nothing that gives you more pleasure than driving someone else into the biggest wave ever as well, because it's like a, it's, you know, I've, I did it to him, you know, I did it for him, and and I could, he's like, do you want it? I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go, <laughs> like, and then um, and I'm um, like, he's the sort of guy as soon as you say yeah, like you you go in no matter what, you know, and you go in fast. And but you, uh, for you, is it always is it always fuck yeah, or is there a little bit of anxiety creeps in there occasionally? Not at that point, no. Okay. When you you know the anxiety is like before. Maybe sometimes after, you know, like you're like, all oh, right, like, we've done it. Let's just get out, you know, like. Mm. Um, but like, th- when you're on that rope, there is like, I'm going, and and you know, and, and there's no second thoughts. There's no worry. There's no like, I'm surfing it. Like, I'm making it. I'm surfing it. Like, critical, on the edge, deep, you know as fast as i can <laughs> no for sure so so that was the so 2012 2014 they were like the turn it there were a couple of turning points yeah yeah there's turning points but yeah. then i guess the the other big turning point was the big wave that that came back to bite you a little bit yeah yeah that that was 2017 where um where, where i broke my back so that's the same place in nazare um it was early on in the season and this is what we we're talking about last about timings and you know knowing when to pull that trigger and um, and it's me being probably like looking back maybe overconfident you know I pulled the trigger I committed way too hard on a mm. wave which I, I read wrong but it's the ocean you know like it's constantly changing you know? and, and what looks like a good wave you know it, w- it was the basically the first big swell of the year and I was just frothing and like you know like so excited i felt super super good physically mentally and um and i we checked it again it was me hugo and, and garrett the guys that i've been surfing with for the last you know eight years and checked it in the morning and i could see these amazing waves and i often like mind surf and sort of visualize my my wave and and how i'd surf a wave and and I was just visualizing, I checked it in the morning with the guys and I was visualizing these lefts, like, and they were like really, really big. 
super hollow, like as I mean hollow, like like so they're tubing, so you could get like basically the holy grail and surfing's like the barrel, so you want to mm. ride inside the wave. Um, but getting like sixty foot barrels is like, you know, yeah. <laughs> like like that's the dream, you know. Like, and I was seeing that, and I was like, yeah, like this is the day, you know. And, and um, had a few waves. You got a few waves, and then Garrett put me on this left, and it was how I saw it was what I saw in the morning, and I was like, okay, right, this is the wave, you know, like it's hundred percent all or nothing, and I went. 100 percent all but you say you came in there too fast is that is that the speed that the jet that the ski brings you in or no no I, I i was so you know i was like garrett put me in perfect and i i basically surfed it surfed the wave and i committed to ride the tube so i committed to be in the barrel as deep as you possibly could inside the wave and to, you know the, the plan is to make it out of the wave like in the wave you know so you can get fully bowed like in the way, run the tube and then come out. And as I bottom turned, it was like really like drawing up. And from my experience, that's what I thought the wave was going to do. And, and then, you know, the ocean's an unpredictable place and it changed dramatically. So it went from like best looking wave that I'd ever seen to one of the worst, but you know, commitment, those commitments in those conditions, you know, they have consequences, you know, and, mm. and when it changed, like, you know, I was fucked because I, I was, I was surfing that wave as if, if it was going to barrel and then it, it looked like it's going to barrel and it didn't. Cause like, I've heard from like other surfers as well. who like interviewed about that wave and stuff. And, and they're like, even just the way you get chucked out, That's like it's, it's something they'd never seen before. Yeah. I guess. You need to watch on YouTube if you are yeah. listening. It's yeah. Pretty. You know, yeah, and and it was something like I'd never felt before. Like, like I can remember th- like coming up the bottom, and thinking, right, okay, and then thinking, oh, f- shit, like this isn't gonna go well, you know. And, and I, I very rarely, le- like, as a surfer, you don't, re- I don't usually like jump off the board. Like, you, you, even if you're not gonna think you're not gonna make the wave, like, it's nice to pull into the barrel, get a view. It's the safest place to be, or ride out in front of the wave and get closer to the beach, and then let it catch you and and knock you off, you know. And, but I was so I was like mid face. The wave had gone all weird and lumpy, and and I just hit the eject button. You know, I've never done that, you know, not like that. And um, and then from that, and I can rem- remember it very very vividly because it sort of happened in slow motion, and like there was no impact. So I I, I jumped, I jumped off the board to get my board away from me. Jumped, and usually you would expect like a wallop of impact, you know. And, and that can be quite violent and then you're down for a while and then you might pop up you might get sucked down again you know but you know you never know and and at that point there was no impact and i was like i felt like i was floating and i was thinking in my head i thought that i was being sucked over the falls like in the wave and and then i was thinking I was, then i was thinking shit i shouldn't have jumped off my board i should have ridden this out i should be on my board now in the tube riding this and now i'm getting like sucked over and then um and i was just weightless and i was thinking i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit i was i was preempting this sort of impact and it didn't come it didn't come and it didn't come to what felt like ages and all of a sudden smashed and it went through my whole body and instantly i was like Fuck, that's six months out. <laughs> I, I just yeah, knew, I didn't know what I'd done, but like it was. So you, didn't so, get, you didn't get knocked out. You were just no, no. Just yeah. like that. It's just like it. It was so violent and so gnarly. I just knew instantly. I was like, like I didn't know I'd broken anything at that point, but I was like, that's not good. Like yeah. that's that's gonna be a like I'm gonna feel that tomorrow. <laughs> and then at the same time, you're probably getting drowned as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Then I was down, and getting smashed upside down, inside out, and then um. And I was down for quite a touch some time. Um, and I popped up just in time to get a breath. And then I had another wave on my head. I got ragdolled again. I was under for some time. And all the time, obviously, my pain in my back. And I had this shooting pains down my leg. Um, and then by the time I came up the second time, uh, Hugo managed to rescue me. And um, and then got me to the beach. And the time I got to the beach, I was... I, I couldn't walk and I was just like, I was done. And I, I knew, I know I was like, 
you know, there was lifeguards on the beach and, you know, obviously I would lifeguard myself for like seven years and sort of told them, I was like, I'm pretty sure, like, mm. <laughs> pretty sure that this is a spinal situation. And they, and then yeah. they, they took the care of the rest, really. I, it, it seems like, so I remember watching one of your vlogs as well and, um, you kind of it almost seems like a little bit of a sadistic element with surfers where you're like you know you were coming back after your injury and you're like i want to get beaten up a little bit like i kind of bailed out and i want to get chucked around a little bit and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff yeah because i think you like um like do you do you, you guys might i don't know if you have this or not like have you ever like crashed and then you're kind of like you crash and i and i was like i was in the back of my mind like I wanted to put my body through something similar to know if I could take it, you know, do you know what yeah. I mean? Or if I still liked it and, and it's like kind of baptism by fire a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And, and I actually, I learned this from Garrett, you know, like, um, like, because, you know, before I met Garrett, I didn't think it was humanly possible to survive some of the things I saw him doing, you know? And, um, and he sort of said to me, like, he's like, you gotta, you gotta love that shit. Like you've got to love the worst thing that's ever going to happen to you because if you don't love it, there's no point in doing it. You know because because you're going to get you're going to experience that more than you are like surviving the waves. You know like you have to be prepared and you have to enjoy the worst to get to get a chance at seeing the best. So so talk us through that moment when you like so it doesn't have to be about that that wave where you broke your back, but like when you do bail out and you know you're going to get like thrown around a little bit. You know you're like going to be under the water for a little bit of time. Like, what what goes through your head through that moment? Is it is uh, it a survival thing or is it? It's it's the, it's a skill, like it's a skill set that um. You're kind of truly at the mercy of nature at that yeah, point, I guess. Yeah, and and the the thing the thing is is that you know you're never ever going to beat the ocean. Yeah, it's just fact. It doesn't matter like how long you can hold your breath for, how fit you are, how strong you are, how best how good you can swim. You will not beat the ocean, mm. you know. But um, how was that? Um, but I have, I've got a really good um ability to think and do nothing. Like I can just turn off like that, and that's the that's that's the trick to survival in the ocean. You know, like when you when you fall on a wet, on a big wave, the second you you kick into that, that thinking like, oh, I'm gonna hurt myself, or oh, I'm gonna drown, or oh, you know like your feel, physiology changes in your body and, and you'll tense up or you'll start using oxygen or and it will be a horrible situation i think there's something about that in cycling a little bit because whenever there's a whenever i've crashed and it's been pretty bad like you there's a bit of you that knows it's coming yeah and you and, and because it's in slow motion when you're doing it at the mm. time you kind of just shut your eyes and you know it's going to happen you, you yeah got, you've got to go with it you can't fight it and then uh, it's that kind of thing like i think the people who survive are the ones who just kind of just go with it because if you fight it as you said you're going to be in a in a really shit place afterwards yeah and, and it's amazing some of my worst experience like like sometimes when i come home so I've, say i've been like on a big wave trip and i've had you know because in a session you might get you know 15 20 waves you you don't always make all of them. You often, you know, you're going to get a couple of ways on the head no matter what. Um, and they can all be fine. Yeah. And then I'll come home, I'll go surfing at Croyd and I might have, I, as in, it feels worse sometimes that the hold downs at Croyd because I'm not, sometimes I do fight it at Croyd. <laughs> you know, like, I go, oh, it shouldn't be like, you know, oh, and I'll like go to swim up or like, you know, like wrestle it a little bit and then, and it puts you on the diff straight away. You're like, <gasps> oh, oh, you know, mm. it, was, it was just completely, you know, and you and then you doubt yourself. You go, shit, like, I nearly, you know, that was a horrible experience, or that wasn't how I suspected it to be because it's only two feet, and you know, ha, ha, you know, you kind of like don't. It's hard, and it's hard to. To, to explain you know but so it's, it's probably a little bit like getting caught out in a lip in a lip tide you're better just to go like the ocean's in charge so yeah, you're better yeah. to go with it you can't fight it and but it, you have to keep reminding yourself that like and if you do fight it that's a lot of energy you're using up pointless energy and and you you know an oxygen and you know which is not going to get you anywhere so if we go back i've got a quick question about that about that clash as well because i watched i watched the whole thing and uh the 
the thing I thought when I watched the end of the video was, have you ever seen those videos of when the stretcher comes on for football matches <laughs> and, people, and, and people fall off a million times? Yeah. And, and that's what I thought because it was like, he's up and then the jet ski bailed out, the jet ski comes back in, you get on the jet ski, the jet ski gets swamped. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, tra yeah. the trailer, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yeah, gets, gets slid off the back, yeah, the sled yeah. gets torn off the back and then all of a sudden you're getting seen to on the side of the beach and then the wave comes in and takes out yeah, every yeah, single yeah. lifeguard. Yeah. Like it just seems like a comedy of others, I guess, you know, in, in like the, in the nicest way possible. No, but it was, was but, is that how it always ends up? Is it always a bit of a kind of well, organized but, mayhem? Um, you know, I think that the unique things with like, especially the ocean, um, but you know, you can't just blow the whistle and go right, sh right, wave stop, right, let's all sort this out, you know, yeah, like let's yeah. get the stretcher in, you know, right, actually, no, the the waves can't, the sets can't come, so you know, like it's everything doesn't stop keeps going you know like yeah but what we know from football is even when the whistle does go <laughs> like it's still a mess sometimes <laughs> as well yeah. yeah but you know so so everyone's just like keeps you you know like you just got to keep going cuz you know, I, I, I guess the bit i'm thinking is like when you get when you get ejected out of that wave and that and that's the word like ejected yeah. it's like as a it's a proper like you see the wave crashing over and, and you get thrown out of the whole thing and you see a smack down on the on the on the on the ocean, mm. and you you just know like for some for, for someone who's seen a few bad crashes and stuff, you know that's that's the yeah. point where it goes wrong. You know, and you were saying you're getting pains down your leg and all that kind of stuff, and you just think like the amount that your body had to go through with a broken back yeah. before you could get that spine stabilized. Yeah, it's pretty traumatic as well. Like, yeah, but, it, but then it's amazing what you can get through if you have to get through. You know, like you know. You know, obviously, ideally, in, a, in the in the best case scenario, then you know, then as soon as you break your back, obviously you want to stabilize it and you want to do. It. But you know, if you can't, you can't. You know, <laughs> like, like yeah. what can you do? You know, like, and you know, the guy driving, the, you know, who goes driving the jet ski, you know, he has to go through waves. You know, he has to, do, you know, he has to either beach the ski, which is like a gnarly or you know go back out through the waves or you know like what, what's he to do as well to be honest, you know? yeah. he, he, when he beached the ski it was pretty impressive yeah. i've never seen a jet ski move across sand so fast the <laughs> thing comes in like 40 k's an hour and just yeah. like goes straight up to the beach but like it, it's funny when you see that as well because it's like he ends up off the ski at some point as well yeah yeah so, he got off the ski because you know like um but that's you know, like and all of a sudden there's two of you in the war which yeah. like from my limited lifeguarding experience is pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's you know like that's you know like f for me that's just that's everyday sort of big way surfing in Nazare you know like it is that's how it is you you never know you know like it, it, and it's, you're constantly adapting constantly changing there's no right or wrong way to do something because you, you're adapting constantly you know like um which is why it's interesting. That's why I love it. Are there any deaths in big wave surfing? Or? Um, yeah, that there has. Yeah, there has been. Um, you know, there's been some really famous ones, and you know, of, of like really well-known big wave surfers. Mm. And um, but on the whole, you know, it's relatively safe. I think um, yeah. th in the past, like five or six years, the safety equipment's gone, gone got, mm. you know, really good and people are more focused on that now and i think as well as the safety equipment and float um equipment that people what the surfers are using now um people are just more conscious yeah. conscious of that you know um like you know like 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 surfers won't well, surfers are weird i think like, well, you know, all athletes are weird but but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know like um you know 10 years ago for example when i was in hawaii surfing waimea like if i wore a a float suit or an inflatable vest out at Waimea in Hawaii, you'd have been laughed out of the water. You know, like, yeah. what is this idiot doing? You know, like, can't he survive by himself? And now you'd probably go at Waimea and everyone would be wearing a float suit or something like that. It catches yeah. on slowly. It's a bit like, you know, skiers wearing helmets and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the exactly. Well, you get one guy, like, I think, um, you know, Mark Fu, he's a, he was a really, really famous big wave surfer, an amazing surfer. He, he drowned at, at, at Mavericks. And, you know, you know like, things happen. To, to, to some of the elite, some yeah. of the best people, and then you, and then it's sort of like, oh, we're all not invincible, you yeah, know, like, yeah. you know, okay, right, maybe we should wear a little bit of safety kit, and you know, and it suddenly becomes the norm, you know, whereas probably like ten years ago it wasn't the norm, and now it is, you know, like I wouldn't even think about going in the water without like a a float suit and an inflatable vest.
So yeah, let's let's get on to the equipment side of, equipment side, of yeah. surfing. So like you've got the float vest, which which sounds a little bit like uh, a life vest on an airplane. I guess you, you pull it and then uh, it inflates. Uh, so no, so that's an inflatable vest. So um, I wear like a float suit. So which is like a, a like a like a shorty wetsuit with um, float pads. So there's the fl- the inflatable vests, which I also use as well, are all very well. But if you go unconscious, then you can't pull it. So <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, it's good to, to wear a bit of float that's going to just bring you to the top, no matter what. So what? So that's a good question. So obviously, like, the broken back is the most, like, talked about injury you've had. But have you gone under the water unconscious a couple of times as well? Um, no. No. You know, I've never... Uh, I, well, I have, I have blacked out once surfing, but that was at home and got... I hit, the, hit a rock in the back of my head and sort of... Um, was concussed a little bit, but um, because I guess I guess on the equipment side, the thing I'm thinking when I'm watching you guys go and they then like obviously when you hit the water, that speed it is like concrete, it's a proper yeah. smack. Mm. Yeah, like why is there no helmets? Um, some guys wear helmets. Um, again, not you, not you, Luke, because that's for the soft ones, basically. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's just personal preference, you know. Um, you know, uh, there are guys that that do wear helmets and. Because Red Bull would be pretty happy if you wore a helmet, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just, do you know, it's just something that I've got used to and that, you know, I like. Um, you know, you know, it's just personal preference to me. Like, the, the Garrett often wears a helmet. Um, there's a few, a few other, like, you know, elite guys that wear helmets. It's, per, it's personal preference. I guess um, it's a little bit of a toss-up because you see in, like, um, in, well, in boxing, it's like... It, there's arguments now about taking away the helmet protection. Well, the, the thing is, is that I've always yeah. thought is that, um, like when I fall, like it's something to, to jar my neck, like the the helmet will catch the water first and sort of like, rather than my, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a good it, point, yeah. It, it's really weird because I, I blew my collarbone on the track once and then I think the next crash after that, I actually landed with my head first because I was trying to protect my collarbone yeah. a little bit and right. then and then you end up with a really shit concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a catch 22 almost a little bit. Yeah, it is, but you know like I, I you know definitely like if your board hit you in in the head, it, you know, a helmet will save save your life for sure, you know, like but again, you know, it's it's all personal preference. Like like with the flotation and um and the the float suits and inflatable vests and stuff, you know, like I I've been surfing through the era of like there being no flotation to then surfers trying to work out their own shit to then now there's stuff on the market where you can buy you know and and it's still everyone every surfer is very it's a very personal option you know and a very very personal preference as well like uh, there's things that i like you know like i like there's a certain float suit that i like there's a certain inflatable vest that i like and other surfers will have completely different just take it back to basics what what triggers the float to happen what do you mean? So, like you say, like if you're unconscious, obviously you can't pull a cord yeah. to get to get the inflation. So then, what, what, like, so what triggers that inflation to come on if you did if you did pass out, for example? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Yeah. It wouldn't. Oh, right. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oh, so right, that's okay. why that's why you wear a float suit. So that will keep you buoyant. Yeah. So ah, you, okay. you you got to remember. Oh, so like, it's always it's always buoyant. I guess. Yeah. So you'd be a little bit buoyant, but but you you know you're not talking about um, floating in a swimming pool. We're talking about aerated water. So. You you come all, you're almost like if if I wasn't when you're swimming in this area of water with with no float on whatsoever, it's a lot of effort just to get your head above the water because mm. it's just so much air, so much foam. Because um, you know obviously those waves detonate and it just like it just air goes through the water and so. Yeah. I mean, I've experienced that with two footers in Rio, and that was yeah. that was that was scary. A, that was a wasn't it? To get, it was scary. Yeah, yeah, scary. yeah, yeah. Like it's, so, so, so with an eighty footer, you can imagine the the knock on effect. I of don't that, even I think it was two foot. <laughs> <laughs> one one yeah. day it was at it's least. Not, to be fair, the whole equipment thing sounds very similar to the BMX guys because some of those guys like wearing a neck brace, some of them don't like wearing the neck brace, whatever they like. Yeah, 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 yeah but that's that's why we got Andrew on because we want to yeah. we want to up the BMXs. We're we're, t- we're too fed up of being <laughs> yeah. like looking like pussies, basically. Yeah, well, it's um, <laughs> you know, and it's funny like um, some guys wear so much float, you know, um, that you know it, it might impair their movement, but they'd rather float than and move less and then other guys would go the other way and go oh, I'd rather float less but be, and be able to move you know like it's yeah. just it's all 
up to the athlete and personal preference and maybe experience and, and what they've experienced, you know, like th- within their, 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 you know, their career or surfing. Yeah. So I've listened to another podcast um, with Shane Dorian and Joe Rogan yeah. and he, they were actually talking about um, sharks in Hawaii and you said you surf quite often in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, have you ever, ever experienced sharks there? Um, or, or Australia? We're talking off, Australia? off, off yeah. air. <laughs> we're talking yeah. off air about <laughs> Australia as well. Um, yeah, like, this is something... Yeah, sharks are, you know, they're in the sea. I, I, it's one of the things... That <laughs> that's, that's the most laid-back <laughs> yeah. explanation ever. It's like, yeah, they're in the sea. <laughs> Wait, mate, it's, mate, it's, like, if you, if you swim at, like, Liverpool or something <laughs> like that, you, you know there's sharks in the sea, but you know they're not there. I guess. <laughs> well, you, you never know. Um... <laughs> I don't know. It's something I never really think about. Um, when I've been in like Western Australia um, and places like that, you notice the behaviour of some of the surfers. Like w- some of the spots that you surf, they wouldn't like float around in the sea. They generally want to be on the skis. <laughs> Whereas like I would be like oblivious to it and be like floating in the sea. And, like what yeah. the hell are you doing? Like get on the ski. Like is that a bit of like ignorance is bliss a little? Yeah. Bit? Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. You know, like. Um, and they've obviously experienced or seen more sharks than I probably have. Mm. Um, so you know, like like I've you know, I've seen sharks in Ireland, and I, you know, but not probably nothing. So in, in Ireland, in Ireland, yeah. Well, basking sharks are actual sharks. Um, <laughs> no, someone said it. Someone no, it wasn't a basking shark. It was like a proper, proper shark. shark. Oh, There's shit. sharks everywhere. Well, not really, though. Yeah, there is. Are yeah, they? Of course they are, yeah. Just believe Andrew. I'm never going to see. I'm never going in the ocean again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fuck but that. You, but, 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 you know, like, what are the chances of getting, you know... The well, in Western Australia, I'm pretty high, I think, but yeah. Yeah, but even even so, really... Because we, we were at the Gold Coast and there was, like, a shark scare. They had, like, a helicopter go over with a big siren and yeah. everyone, like, ran out of the water in a mass panic and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I think, it, again, you know, like... Um, I think, you know, you can attract that sort of just with a, a fear and energy and, you know, like you can attract yeah. that sort of shit. And so is it, is it, it, like you said, ignorance is bliss, you know, like. Yeah. Well, no, is it a little bit like a dog, though, I guess? So, like, they can sense fear. Probably, yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. But, you know, like, like, I think, you know, you've only got to, like, look at some of the videos on YouTube and, you know, you can obviously see some horrific shark attacks, but you can also see some amazing free divers and people interacting mm. with wildlife and sharks and stuff like that in, in a natural environment and that like it it's it's fine you know like like um a guy called mark healy's a big wave surfer and some of the videos that i've seen of him free diving with great whites and other sharks yeah. are just insane i guess it's probably more common to actually get turned on or like get bitten by a dog yeah than a shark, but yeah, but, yeah, or, yeah or, or you would hope bit, that wouldn't kill you, but yeah, yeah. but but, but or be in a road traffic accident, or yeah, you know, yeah. like or fall over down the curb, or yeah. you know, like well, that's the weird thing about cycling because the whole thing about it is like you know, statistically, you're more likely to get hurt being a pedestrian per kilometre than you are as a cyclist and all that kind of stuff. So it's like once you look into it, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's you a get sca- a little bit relaxed, it, it, I guess. It's scare, you know, like you know, it's a lot of it's a bit scaremongering, isn't it? You know, like. um and I know there has been fatalities in, in you know Western Australia, and you know people have been bitten, at, you know, in, in Hawaii and we're, you know all over the world. But you know we're we're in we're in the ocean. Like, yeah. you know, what do you expect? So it's, I guess like the common theme here is like you've just got a respect for the ocean. It's like it's it's the availability of it. It's the yeah. The, it's it's their and home. It's not ours. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. Like don't, don't get me wrong. Like um, you know. I don't actually like like I'm not into um snorkeling or looking too much what's below me. Okay. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I just like I know it's there and it's just it is there, you know, like um yeah, so I'm not like like into diving with sharks or anything crazy like that or like, mm. you know, I just it's just something that I try not to think about and I don't think about and I just know it'd be all right, you know, like Well just, hopefully, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> you know you know, I'm it's like my drive home tomorrow is going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know, you know. <laughs> well, we we hope anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess come like just to touch on the equipment quickly because I think one of the really for me anyway one of the shocking bits and like illustrative points of like how fierce th- you know a wave can be is like um, in one of your vlogs you come out and your your surfboard snaps in half. Yeah. And you just think 
and and then and like in the video before you're talking about like it's made of carbon fiber you got some like uh comp lead, composite lead. plastic yeah. there yeah, as well yeah. and all he was gutted the uh, was broken because it cost him a grand yeah yeah, yeah and that expensive bits of kit yeah no like it, i think this goes back to like how like i've never really been like i think the first thing that we all think about or a lot like the general public think about is when they see big waves is oh you know how long are you underwater for you know and and for me it's never really been about how long on the water it's like how hard the impact is you know because the amount of energy and power in the ocean even on a two foot wave or three foot wave or whatever is just insane you know like so when you times that by you know 80 or whatever you however how big it is and how much water is it it's just nuts you know like and it's never been how long you'll be underwater for it's, it's always going to be like Will my arm get ripped off? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, or like my knee, or you know, like yeah. or my you know, because it, it really when it hits you, like when you get hit by a wave, you know, it hits you. Well, you know, like it, you know, if you've been swimming in the, the beach breaks in Brazil, you know, like <laughs> yeah, like our mate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, you know, Honestly, he, like, it was you. like six or seven waves, and I thought, "Fuck, he's dead." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, and and it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, to be fair, he was useless though. So he he he'd like come out of the, come out of the surf and be looking at me, and I'd just be like, "There's a there's a, a pretty big wave just about to hit you from behind, and you don't realize it'd be straight back under again, straight under all the rest of it." Yeah. But um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about um Portugal and Nazala and all that kind of stuff. Like that seems like quite a special place for the big wave surfers. It's it's like the kind of mecca, I guess, of surfing. It, it's turned it's turned into the to yeah like a, a big wave mecca, and it's relatively new, which is kind of a bizarre thing really because it's only recently got surfed been surfed for years and years and years but it's only been surfed big or been taken seriously as a big wave surf spot in the last four or five years four years maybe maybe less than that four years say it come but it seems like it kind of comes with those dangers as well because like i was listening to people say talk you know talking about the death zone and all that kind of stuff with the locks on the side and all that kind of stuff and you don't want to get you don't want to get it, you know if you wipe out you don't want to be anywhere near that area and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah but that's it's you know it's just like any surf spot around the world like all like i can think of um so as many death zones around the world is what you're trying well, to say well no but like it's every every spot is unique like, nowhere's the same you mm. know like yeah, shorts um, and hawaii's got pretty sharp corridors hasn't it yeah sh you know like but, but everywhere everywhere like so you know like every spot every big wave spot or surf spot you know which is of world class will have its own unique you know dangers i suppose mm. you know and um and every wave breaks differently um every you know storm will produce different types of waves if it's coming from different directions or you know like um you know and yeah nazare is a particularly dangerous place you know and, and um and it is relatively new to the big wave surfing world um so we're still sort of working it out and um you know experiencing it and i think that the 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 level of surfing and um but the the performance out there from different individuals and athletes is still going through the roof you know like i've heard i've heard now is a bit of a weird place though because you kind of have you, you know you got people watching the entire time i guess and there's almost a bit of like a kind of gladiatorial need for yeah, yeah, a wipeout or something like that. I guess a little bit. <laughs> well, I just think you know we come from that. Um, we come from that sort of weird era at the minute where it's like car crash TV. You know, you know, like everyone loves a crash. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and that's the that's you know. Yeah. Do you, do you still love them or do you do you kind of get sick to your no, stomach every like, time you see something? It's, it's funny, like when I when I've been injured and I haven't been surfing, I've I've, I've been down to watch a few times and. God, like it, it gives me anxiety watching that place, man. Like, you know, I, I don't like it, but I feel I actually feel more comfortable in the sea. You know, like it, it's, it gives me full like when you're seeing your mates do stuff and like you're like, oh no, 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 this one, not this one, oh no, yeah. you know, like it's like, oh, you know. I think, yeah, our perception changed a bit when um was the last year our pretty famous track sprinter German German cyclist Christina Vogel crashed in a um in a training session rode into the back of another dutch rider and she was paralyzed straight away um and she she was on the track she knew just paralyzed yeah and now i'm riding around the track and think like like 
we need to be careful here. Where, yeah. be, where before I wasn't really thinking about it. Yeah. Where now I've like heard horror stories and Christina was no, paralyzed. It kind of comes to you with a deeper extent with being a lifeguard and stuff like that. You you've seen what it like. Y- ignorance is bliss. I get that. Y- yeah. But like you've also seen the worst that the, wor- the ocean can do. Yeah, but yeah. then also you can't. I don't think you can. You you know, like I like it goes back to like wanting to feel the power of the ocean. You know, like after like breaking my back and then wanting to get a proper good wipeout again. You know, like <laughs> you you but you cannot be you can't be surfing with that in the back of your mind. Mm. You know, like oh I might hurt myself or or, or you know like I might be paralyzed or like you know you know is, is you, that is that when you stop? Yeah, I think maybe I don't know or, or like yeah, it's a fine line. You know, and it is a fine line. I think again it goes down to like knowing when to pull the trigger or knowing when to like put everything in but you know like when you when you get in your flow like you know and it must be the same with with training you know like you you might in like for a split second think oh i don't want to get injured but then as soon as you get in your flow or so you get into the session or when i start catching waves i am not thinking about getting injured you know i'm just thinking about riding every wave the best i can you know and and trying to get that rhythm and you know get everything in a pattern where like and when you get in those patterns and everything starts flowing like that's when you get your that's when you do your best work or you, you know like your best you get your best ways or you know and because if you if you often if you think about if you think about the worst all the time then it just stops you doing things you know you, you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna get that wave you're not gonna you know you're not gonna move forward as an athlete. Or, or a surfer, or whatever you want to call yourself, you know. So I, th- I think, does that does that change a little bit when you have like dependence? I guess though, because it's like you know, I I get like you know, with your with your wife and a lot of discussions you had about when it was financially arduous, I guess. Um, but when but when you know, is there any kind of like pushback from those guys when whenever you like from your friends and your family when when they know the risks involved? I think like ev- you know, I think a lot of people listening to the podcast have probably seen Philly Solo, and everyone knows. You know how much how stressed out his girlfriend is the entire time when it, when he's doing something mm. as dangerous as that. Do you ever get any kind of not pushback, but I guess kind of like yeah, I, th- I think you know like um, maybe family and that get worried, you know, and you know the, of, of course, you know of course they're they're gonna you know I think and I think if it was the other way around, like you know if it was my kids going doing something whether it's surfing or, I don't know, rock climbing or whatever, they're doing something dangerous, of course you're going to be worried, you know? But am I going to stop them doing it? Nah. You know, am I going to, you, you know, like, I could maybe say afterwards, God, I was worried that you were, you know, going to get hurt on that, but I'm glad you're not. But I wouldn't go tell them, like, no one, like, Katie doesn't go, oh, I'm really worried, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, because then that's going to put me on a weird sort of level mm. going into the sea again. Oh, Katie doesn't really want me to be doing this. So, so how do you how do you deal with that? I guess because I remember uh, again watching the vogs and stuff like McNamara's there with his with his family and stuff like that. But it seems like well, think, do, do you take you them out ha- with you or is it well, is it quite the, a bit the, separate thing? No, they they they've been out before, you know, and and for the kids, you know, that like it's just the norm, you know, like they wouldn't even, yeah, you know, it's just what I do. And well, the kids are pretty fear, fearless anyway, though. Yeah, and they just like just all they t- take it in, you know. And but you know, at the end of the day. You know, I, I don't, I'm, like you trust your instincts, and you're, you you know, like I wanna, I wanna surf until I'm, you know, a hundred, and I wanna be surfing big waves for as long as I can, and I wanna, you know, you don't do, you don't wanna, hurt, you know, like, like I, I don't wanna do anything to to hurt myself, or I don't wanna die, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I, I don't wanna labour like, on it too much, I guess, but it's, yeah, I, it's just, it's just that funny tipping point and I, I don't know if it's like maybe we shy away from it a little bit because athletes are quite selfish and you, and you kind of put yourself in that position yeah. where you're going to be doing something quite dangerous yeah but but i think it, it is it is that point you know like where, where a lot of people would say oh well he's got a family now he shouldn't be doing that mm. you know and you will get people to say that and and that's fair enough you know i understand that you know but you know i also understand um you know my response piece as a as a as a father, but also, you know, I you know I don't want to just be like have that excuse. Oh yeah, you know, 
I could have done this, but I got, had kids and I decided not to. And I thought, you know, like because because it comes with resentment, I guess as well. Yeah, is that, and, that thing? and then you don't you're not living your life, are you? Like, mm. you know, and maybe that has been really selfish again. You know, uh, you know, are we just selfish males? <laughs> you know what I, mean? Well, like, I mean, like to put, to put it into like cycling context, like w- when you're in the GB system, it's all about how you can make the best of the services that are around you. So, like whether it's biomechanics or S and C or physiology or um, you know uh, physiotherapy, it's all about how you can get the most out of those services. So it, it bleeds quite a selfish environment. Yeah. I don't think it's something to shy away from as being an athlete necessarily, but I think it's something that people are often quite shy of admitting. I guess. Yeah, you know, but but I I think. I think it's quite, you know, there's loads of dangerous things, but but because it's such a niche sport that people perceive it as more like no one would go to a Formula One driver and go, "That's so selfish, you you're doing that." Mm. Yeah, and yeah. they drive around a bloody track at 300 miles an hour, like like that's pretty yeah. dangerous, you know. I, like, I guess my next question on that because a lot of people, so obviously there's there's a few older guys in in big wave surfing. And and I guess quite commonly the uh, the reason given for Formula One drivers the tiling quite early or not the tiling but moving to different sports and all that kind of stuff is that they, they can't get it into their like they, they have that point in their head where they're coming into a corner at three hundred miles an hour and they start thinking you know what happens if I slide off now and go straight into this digger or go straight into this this barrier or something like that is, do you think like wh- why is big wave surfing the exception because there's some there's some older guys think, in I d- there I d- yeah but I don't think it is I think there'll be lo- lots of guys that w- will you know again you know i think you go i think everyone goes through that 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 period of like whether it's gun ho or like something to prove or you know but i think you you um the older you get i think you you it's a con you're constantly learning and taking all this information and you know and you just become better at making those decisions and you think you become like a master of the sport, I guess. Not, well, or not like, a master. I don't think you ever become a master. You just become, you know, you just become... The wave be- master. <laughs> <laughs> you, just become, <laughs> you just become better at making those decisions, you know. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you'll get them wrong. But, you know, again, it's all about timing. It's all about peaking at the right time. You're, it's so, It's so unique because it's constantly, constantly changing, you know. It's not like... Um, you know, a bend on a racing track, which is always staying the same, you know, okay, right. The conditions might change a little bit, but mm. the bend is always the same. You know, like that bend that you see is constantly changing, you know, so you're constantly adapting. So, you know, as a surfer and your experience is, you know, you just, the, you just soaking it up, soaking it up and it will always constantly change. And, you know, the more times you do it, the more information you have, the more you know how to tackle those sort of, as it changes, you can change your line as well, you know? And so so what, what, at what point do you think people end up calling it a day then? What what, what brings the end to I don't, a I don't think, big wave um, surfer? I don't think they do. You know, I, I think maybe if they were competing competitively, like they might retire from competitive scene. So Carlos Burle, as, a, as an example, um, he's 50 now. Um, last year he um, retired from competitive big wave surfing, so he's not on the the big wave tour anymore. But is he still big wave surfing? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> like he's out of Nazare, charging, you know, getting loads of waves, enjoying it. You know, he's just not competitively big wave surfing, you know, and and that's such a small part of it anyway. I guess like with us. When we stop cycling competitively, we're still going to go on our bikes. I guess it's, it's similar, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. But I, th- I feel like that, that with with cycling, especially in the more dangerous sports like Keelan or something like that, it becomes a bit in your mind sometimes where you think, I don't want that gap. Like, I'm not going to go in there. Cause no, I you, you I, won't yeah. push it. But, yeah. but um, there'd be days that you will. Maybe. Sometimes, yeah. You know, I mean, Phil, si- Phil Phil sits in traffic with the cars. Basically, he doesn't filter. I like to be safe. <laughs> but you you actually got the cycling sponsorship on Sony Instagram. Um, uh, no, I did. Um, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I just did a. There's a, a company called No Pins. Yeah, yeah, we know. Um, uh, who are from my town, uh, Barnsborough, and um, uh, like I, I've used cycling a lot in my rehab. Oh, yeah. I actually kind of like it's kind of weird things. Like I, it was like I never really thought I'd be into cycling. And then with the knee injuries and stuff, and like it's it's great cardio work, it's great training. Kind of got kind of into it, and um, and then Blake who who um, 
owns no pins was like oh do you, do you want me to do yeah. custom thing i was like oh yeah that sounds yeah. good fun and yeah we did when we're doing a little um bit of a video we're doing a video a bit of content for them and um and i designed my own kit and that and so that is awesome yeah but it, it was something like if you said that to me like 10 years ago you know would you be into road cycling i'd be like nah that's not really my thing you know? like i'm not into it. but but i've got more and more into it and it's been such a great way for me to train but also see north devon you know, like mm. I've got like, beautiful North Devon. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't because I've driven around it, like driven around it all my life. But yeah. it's not until you start cycling around it, you sort of appreciate it. Mm. You know, I know that's different from maybe like what you guys do. I don't, I, you know, like, riding circuits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you guys ever go and ride bike? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like I've I've retired, but I still go on my bike. You know, at least once a week, something like that. It's just it's a nice for me. It's a nice escape. It's a nice switching off kind of place, and it's also somewhere you can push yourself into a pretty dark place actually as well. Like you can you can push yourself as hard yeah, as you yeah, want, yeah. I guess. Yeah, well, because you're, you're you're the master again. It's it's like it's like with surfing, or big wave surfing, or whatever. You're your master of your own destination. You know, you can go for a cycle and just keep it ticking over. Or you can go up the biggest hills as hard as you can to the point where you, you know, like, and yeah. it's great, and that's that's and yeah. Where well, you black out, but yeah, not yeah. not food knock <laughs> in the head, basically, yeah. yeah. You know, which I I kind of love, you know, I I love that sort of self you know, torture and so, I don't know. Have you been surfing with your injury, or do you have to stop surfing uh, at all? Well, not with my knee injury, no, because um, I've had a um, I had an operation on graft, so t for that graft to be fully sort of retake is about six to nine months so so what, what so we talked about a little bit about cycling being part of your surfing training now like what what the other like i guess one of the bits i was quite interested in was the uh the breath hold sessions and stuff like that when you're in the in the pool and stuff like that it's where you're kind of training to yeah to kind of hold your breath for as long as possible i guess or yeah um i don't know do you guys do any breath work or not, not particularly. No. I mean, like when I was asthmatic, I was told to play the saxophone, but that was a bit. Yeah, because <laughs> I, 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 I was really asthmatic, and like my, I got my parents got told to to get me swimming, mm. and that's how I sort of my my swimming and my sort of I suppose my surfing even come on really because I was just like love being in the in the water. Mm. Um, no, like about eight years ago, I did a free diving course because I wanted to as as I was surfing bigger waves, I I um I thought okay, right, I need to hold, learn to hold my breath longer um and so i did a free diving course out of survival or out of uh just because i knew that i was gonna be pushing it and you know again it was like um this was like pre inflate inflatable vests um pre float suits and stuff like that it was just like okay right i will this i think i just i just did it off my own back i thought okay right this is something that's going to help me my surfing and um my big way surfing and uh i've just got fascinated by um how quickly we could train our breath and breath holds and and then with that like within like you know i wanted to do this free diving course and i thought that you know it would be really exciting and be in the pool and we're going really deep and you know going you know and the first day was spent in the classroom which is like my idea of hell um most people's yeah <laughs> but um it was the most beneficial day in the classroom I've ever had. And just by learning how to breathe properly and be efficient and, you know, I pretty much tripled my breath hold there. Let's get into some numbers. Like, what's what's the longest you can hold your breath for? And what, what's the longest I, you need to hold your breath for, I guess, as well? I think the, the longest you need to hold your breath is like 20, 30 seconds. You know? right, okay, so not so bad then. Yeah. No, it's not so bad. But, but you know, it would be like sprinting 100 meters then holding your breath for 30 seconds. So, yeah puts a bit of a yeah, yeah. different spin on it um and that and then you might have to do that two or three times um after you know after already getting like half a breath in between that mm. have you so, tried the wim hof method yeah I, I oh did, here we go yeah <laughs> you, you know about it this <laughs> is a podcast special here <laughs> yeah no i did one of his not with wim hof but i did one of his guys that he does his trainers whatever um uh did it a couple of years ago and love it Addictive. you did like a workshop yeah yeah i was actually quite interested in that video as well like how seriously like given you guys do quite a dangerous sport like how seriously you take safety even when it comes to like breath training sessions so you so you, like in that video you're always like if you're going to do a breath, a breath training a breath, a breath training session you always need to make sure you got someone looking after you as yeah, well yeah but that like that's like 
it's so easy, especially in breath holding. Like, you know, like you're going on to like, oh, you know, what's your breath, breath hold and stuff like that. Like, um, it can vary. Like some days, you know, you're struggling to get one minute 30 and other, you know, like some days you get five minutes, you know, and. But that's actually your best, five minutes. Yeah. Five really? minutes is, yeah, best I've ever done, yeah, five minutes. Jeez. Where's that um, with the Wim Hof method? No. no, no ah, no. <laughs> fuck your Wim Hof uh, method. <laughs> with the Wim Hof method, like I use that as re- I feel like a really good recovery, relaxing breath. Yeah, you know, um, and I don't actually ever time those. I just do it on feeling. So like, um, if I had a really stressful day, or if I'm like on a massive high, uh, I find it a really good way. Just do like a, a like do one of those sessions, and then I'm like sort of tingly, relaxing. Helps me get to sleep. I almost use it yeah. as like a meditation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess to like like wind this up a little bit is. Um, what do you think of like the extreme sports kind of landscape i guess so like for instance when i watched like something like free solo or something like that like my heart's in my mouth the entire time because i'm thinking shit this guy's gonna fall off and he's like he's saying to all, the, all his mates as well like don't film this bit because i might i might fall yeah don't film this bit i might fall do you have a little bit in your brain that thinks like what's this fucking issue like it'll be fine or is or are you actually just as amazed at the kind of work that he does compared to like oh yeah every every sport is so unique and so like so there's not that element of like I'm in a dangerous sport, he's in a dangerous sport, so just crack on. No, basically. no, no. Like I like, yeah. I think you know, especially when you see the the top guys do their stuff, and you know, mind mind bending. You know, so much respect. But also, like I watched the game of rugby the other day, and um, I watched the extra Chiefs, um, and the hits they were taking yeah you can yeah. when you go to well, actually club rugby opposed to national rugby you can hear the hits yeah and know, it's like how, smack yeah, how yeah. is that guy gonna get up tomorrow but you know he'll be back training the next day mm. putting in the work he'll fake recovering like, because he has to do it again the next week you like, feel the concussions in 20 years time no you'll yeah. fake that concussion test get straight through it and <laughs> yeah. back on the pitch in a few minutes yeah, yeah. and it's like you know so i think any any like sport whatever level you know especially the elite stuff and the top end stuff it's just nuts and it what, it what we can do what we can train the bodies to do is that something that's quite cool being part of that kind of red bull family is that you're you're meeting people all the time that yeah I are think, doing something you know to the limit of what's humanly possible i guess yeah i suppose it is you know and you and you, you you sort of things you never really think about or or witness or you know like um another example i went to so i'm gonna stop waffling on you no no keep waffling i love the waffle. But, um I always thought like downhill mountain bikers. I was like, "What's the you know what's the big deal with this? Just going down the hill on a mountain bike." Like, yeah. Like, yeah. But when you see those drops in person, holy shit! I yeah. went to that hard line thing, the Red Bull one yeah. in, in Wales. I couldn't walk down it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. those no, guys, it's, it's a jump. It's not. It's not a those walk down guys here. were sent and and then like I was like, "What the hell? That's the most yeah. hardcore." Yeah. You know, and then then you know like being in Harrison Ross. Like there's a lot of um, motorbike guys that go in there, and I just thought, oh, you want a motorbike, you just twist and go. You know, like what? How fit do you have to be to do that? <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> so fit, yeah. so fit and so strong. You know, like and again, you like because you're not involved in that sport, you take it for granted. You know, and well, you don't understand it, so you sort of think, oh, like it can't be that hard. Or and then you 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 meet a couple guys, or or you know, and it's like whoa, like you sort of start yeah, appreciating yeah. it you know for what it is and how gnarly it is and you know i love it i think it's great i think it's great to see and appreciate it. so i think this was the last thing we we're going to finish up on was that you know phil phil's second language is english his first language is german so yes. he'd really like to hear a few like extreme sports terms i was trying to bring him up on the lingo a little bit so stuff like gnarly <laughs> ragdolled can you give us a few more just to just to just to see what you think of them <laughs> <laughs> Ragdolled. Yeah, you said that earlier. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a term or not. I think it's just. I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of whoops in extreme sport yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got a hoot, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, Have you? I don't know. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, uh, did you not do that in cycling? No, not so much. All no. oh, right, like the surf thing <laughs> it's is pretty like, boring sport. <laughs> yeah, like the surfing thing was something you know when someone does something like impressive, like it's like you. <laughs> like, my mates used to just like go, like. <laughs> Like you, like, what the god? What the hell is that guy doing? Like, Same when you just install a radiator when you're plumbing as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sick radiator, man. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, no, that, that's been awesome. Yeah. Like, thanks very much for coming on. 
cool. it's been a yeah, pleasure awesome. having uh, the first non-cyclist on the podcast no thanks for having me yeah, I, hope thanks. I hope it's been um been all right not too boring yeah, yeah a little bit of athlete athlete chatter like get get a, a little bit more into the skin than no, maybe we normally do so uh yeah, yeah it's been good cool thanks, thanks enjoy your gym session tomorrow Cheers, right. yeah. And if, leg uh, day. Yeah. Every day is leg day. <laughs> is it leg day, is it? Yeah. Every day is leg day. Every day, of course. Yeah. That's that's our story through and through. Um so if people want to catch up with you and follow you on Twitter, Instagram, what's your what's your names on there? Um so Andrew underscore cotton on Twitter. Um Andrew underscore Cotty on Instagram. Um I told you his nickname was Cotty, you didn't believe me. Cotty, yeah. Yeah, Cotty, yeah. So yeah. That sounds better in Aussie, doesn't it? Cotty. Cody, Cody. Yeah, it's yeah, it's sort of, um, it started when I was at um, my my first job at Goldstream. So, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, no, fair enough. Stuck calling me Cody, so that was it. Stuck. All done. All right, all right. nice all right. one. Well, we wish you all the best for the season coming up yeah. in October, and like coming on, see a few more big waves, and yeah. uh, hopefully yeah. no more epic wipeouts. No, 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 no more of those. I'm looking forward to full season, and um, yeah, in some of the biggest waves of my life. Hopefully, so yeah. Right, cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers, right. cheers guys. <laughs>